have the pleasure of speaking with Jack Lifton from Investor Intel. How are you today, Jack? I'm very good, Tracy. Thank you. Jack, we've been talking about the announcement that the Ontario government has made about the supply chain for electric vehicle batteries and the $4.98 billion investment not really getting the respect it deserves. Let's just start there, Jack. What do you think about this announcement? I think Ontario is doing a brilliant thing, well thought out. The automotive industry began to boom in Detroit in the mid teens of the last century, 100 years ago, when Henry Ford decided to vertically integrate the industry. The Ford Rouge plant made glass, steel, wire, even, even the original primitive plastics. That, that, and that was the beginning of the, of the automotive industry as the major manufacturing industry in this world for over half a century, maybe more. Now, the one thing that Michigan did not have was raw materials, but luckily Minnesota did. So I remember as a boy watching the ore boats go down the Detroit River from the Mosabi Range of Minnesota to Ford steel furnaces in, in River Rouge. I remember glass making at Ford as a boy. We went on a tour from school to see a glass, a glass making. They made windshields, okay? They made everything. The raw materials, however, came from other places, from all over the world. Then they expanded to the world and Ford built the, Europe's largest car factory, vertically integrated in, in Cologne, Germany. Same thing, I visited that point many times as, as an adult because I was selling them things. Vertically integrated, largest car factory in Europe. Ford invented the vertically integrated manufacturing of automobiles, but they couldn't, they couldn't depend on raw materials from Michigan. Okay, so what happened? Henry was importing the rubber from Malaysia, tin from Malaysia, the, the specialty chemicals for glass from Asia. Okay, that's what was happening. Now, that all went away at the end of the 20th century. It became the fad for car companies to stop being vertically integrated and depend on globalization. And so what happened? Some other countries besides the United States and European states decided, hmm, well, we've got all the raw materials and those guys are doing the manufacturing. Maybe we can turn that around. Well, 30 years ago, China didn't make cars. Now they make a quarter of all the cars in the world, more than anybody in America, more than anybody in Europe. How did they do that? They glean all the raw materials and the manufacturing technology, and they put them in one place, China. Now, what is Ontario doing that's different? Ontario has all of the raw materials necessary to make a car except iron ore. Well, that's, that's close by, isn't it, in, in the Mesabi Range of Minnesota. Copper is close by. It's produced in Michigan. Cobalt is close by. It's produced in Ontario and a little bit, you have to, a little bit of America makes in Michigan. There's lithium deposits in Ontario. They're mostly they're hard rock and they're clays, and there are there are cobalt deposits, and even more importantly, there's cobalt processing in Ontario. There will soon be lithium processing in Ontario. And so what happens? The battery maker, LG, the world's second largest battery maker, they're they're doing a deal with Stellantis former Chrysler, in Windsor, Ontario, to build the largest battery, automotive battery plant in Canada. Canadian miners are already producing cobalt in Ontario. They're, they're looking to produce lithium in Ontario. And on top of that, an Ontario company is the only processor of cobalt in North America is in Ontario. And they've made a deal with Glencore, the world's largest trading company. And Glencore is going to finance them to produce the cobalt necessary in the form necessary to make the batteries in Windsor. And, and the company building the plant in Windsor is looking throughout Ontario for lithium producers. And, they're, and they want lithium processors. So they're vertically integrating battery production. Ontario already makes cars, a lot of cars. 
So they'll be vertically integrating the manufacture of cars and trucks in Ontario. And, and surprise of all, the government of Ontario is promoting this. They're saying, well, we're going to take a hard look at reducing regulatory issues. We're going to help finance the, these operations. And we're supporting the, the total vertical integration of the production of, of battery-powered electric vehicles in Ontario. This is the first jurisdiction outside of China to do this, openly to do this. And I think it is a brilliant move. I, I don't know the Premier Ford of Ontario, but I'd like to shake his hand because he is he has leaped ahead of the rest of North America oh, in, 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 in vertical integration. What? And that is that's why I'm excited. I guess I'm I'm getting too emotional about this, but I'm so excited to see vertical integration return to North America. I won't say to you that I'm I'm not surprised it's in Ontario because the the government of Ontario is quite frankly a lot more savvy than the government of let's say Michigan. They they know they they are really on the right track and I suspect that that Windsor is going to go from quite frankly I think Windsor is going to be uh, much more important than Detroit in about 10 years in the automotive industry. And I'm not kidding. And people say, are you crazy to say something like that? No, I'm talking about reality. And that's a wrap, a five minute wrap on uh, the advantages of living in Ontario. And for all yep. of you Investor Intel audience members out there, I would recommend that you pull up your sleeves and start looking at all the publicly listed companies that are doing exploration or working towards production and development in this area. Thank you, Amen. Jeff.